Hey guys and welcome to another episode tutorial with me Joseph Evans, author of The Secret Sequence Books and The Phoenix Prophecy, The Ember Effect, Soulbound, The Secret of Rain, The Last Goodbye and Glitch Girl. If you find these tutorials helpful don't forget to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thank you so much guys. Okay today I'm going to be showing you how you can make child characters for your episode stories. Now there's no official way to do this and it was quite difficult to make the regular characters look like children in both the classic and ink art styles but fortunately Limelight has a lot more customization options and with a bit of tweaking we can make characters look somewhat like children. How about we make a male character to start with? Let's call him Jamie and we can choose any of the default characters to start off with. Why not Joe? Click create and save and the first thing we're going to want to make sure is that his eyebrows look like a child. Children tend to have less pronounced eyebrows so let's choose round thin I think. And we can zoom in on our character's face by using this magnifying glass button. And more important than eyebrows is hair. The main thing to remember here is that as men get older their hairline recedes over time. So boys tend to have hair that's lowered down their foreheads. This short shaggy style that we already have applied here works very well. As does the wavy messy style. Something like this? Not so much. I'm going to go with wavy messy. With eyes, we're going to want to choose the largest we can find. Children naturally have smaller heads than adults and the best way we can create this illusion is by giving them extra large eyes. I find that the oval wide pair of eyes look the biggest. If I compare that with the one next to it, this narrow almond deep sunken, you can see that that instantly makes the character look older. So let's go back to oval wide and face shape is also very important. Adults generally tend to have very pronounced jaw lines and cheekbones whereas children's bones haven't fully developed yet so they have much softer rounder faces. Let's select round broad cheeks, much better. And a similar principle applies to the nose as well. A child is less likely to have something like this kind of nose and way more likely to have something like the button round. Finally onto lips and this isn't so important to be honest I think I'm going to leave it exactly where that is. Okay we have our child character now we just need to give him appropriate clothing. Let's save the changes and go to outfits. Now of course you can choose any clothes you like for your child characters but I would recommend baggy clothes which look oversized and make them as casual as possible. This will really help them look younger. Just think to yourself would a young boy choose to wear a fitted smart blazer and a pair of loafers or a loose hoodie and some sneakers? He's probably gonna go for the hoodie and the sneakers. I can actually just type in baggy into the search bar and it'll bring up some baggy clothes. We've got some nice hoodies here. How about this bright purple one? I think that will go well. And maybe these sweatpants as well. Let's type in sneakers and let's give him these white sneakers. Perfect. Let's save that as Jamie's default outfit. And now let's go and make ourselves a girl character. Let's call her Chloe and let's use maybe Hazel as the starting default character. Create and save. Let's go to eyebrows. And even though this one is called Arch Thick Styled, I actually think that one works the best for some reason. Possibly because it's less angled and less mean looking than some of the others. With female hair, the main thing to keep in mind is that it's much less likely that a child will have highly styled hair. It's much more likely to be in some kind of simple ponytail or other basic style. I find that this short messy ponytail works a treat. Again, let's look for the largest eyes that we can find. How about this round downturned wide? And I think I'll change the color of your eyes to a brown. Let's go to face. And the same principle applies to face structure. We're probably not going to want something like square defined, which will give it a defined jaw. We're going to want something more like the round soft. And with nose, let's choose the same one round button. With lips, like I said earlier, lips aren't really that important. Children can have thin lips or full lips. I think I'm going to go for small heart maybe. A more important thing than choosing the style of the lips is actually the colour. It's very unlikely that children will be wearing lipstick. So instead of having a bright red, we're going to want to make sure that her lips match the colour of her skin. Perfect, let's save the changes and let's go to outfits again. And once again we can use the same principle for Chloe as we did with Jamie with clothes. A child is most likely not going to be wearing this kind of businessy outfit that she's currently wearing. Let's remove those and pick something way more casual and baggy. Now an extra thing to keep in mind is that a young girl will of course have a much flatter chest than an adult woman. So it's best to pick clothes that hide the chest area or give the illusion that it's flatter. This open hoodie white t-shirt combo does a great job of this. And let's maybe give her some shorts, these studded casual ones. 
and some sneakers as well. How about these pastel pink ones? Okay, that is it. Now we have a boy and a girl. Let's see how we spot direct them. I already have a scene set up where there's a mom and a dad at a fair and we want their children to be with them. Let's add Chloe into the scene by saying Chloe stands up screen left and Chloe faces right. And then we'll have Jamie, he stands up screen right and Jamie faces left. Save and preview. And because we were able to make our characters look young, when we scale them down using the spot directing tools, they should hopefully look like children and less like just adults who have been scaled down. There we go, we can now copy and paste the spot coordinates into our script. So Jamie and Chloe. And we'll just make sure everybody's in the correct layers by moving them around. So we have Chloe moves to layer one, Jamie moves to layer two, dad moves to layer three, and mom moves to layer four. That'll just make sure that the parents are always standing in front of the kids. And how about animating the children? Well, the main thing to keep in mind is that children tend to be a lot more excitable and animated than adults. So let's say we want to have Chloe say, I'm going straight on that Ferris wheel. We can use something like react clap hands happy to show how excited she is. And let's just put a pause for a beat before that happens. Then if we want Chloe to run off to the right, we just need to make sure that she stays the same scale. To avoid her suddenly becoming the size of an adult again, all we have to do is avoid using exits right, exits left, or any of the preset stage positions like up screen right or screen left. If we use spot directing to drag her over to the right, so like this, and then copy and paste that here, she will remain the correct size. Of course, we need to write walks to and and Chloe is run athletic neutral loop if we want her to be running rather than walking. Also, let's add in a duration. So we want this to happen in two seconds. So in two. Let's see how that looks. Great. So Chloe's run off to get on this Ferris wheel. Let's have Jamie say, can I go on the Ferris wheel as well? And we could have him perform the talk, maybe arms raised animation. Then the dad could say, I don't know. You were mean to your sister in the car. Let's just add in some animations for him as well. Maybe talk, think, and talk, unsure. Let's make some room. And then we can have Jamie say, it's not fair. Chloe always gets to do cool stuff. And some really good childish animations for when you want kids to be angry are uh, talk, as if angry and to complain angry. How about we also have him burst into tears at this point. So Jamie starts cry, sniff, sad loop. We'll pause for maybe one. And then the dad feeling sorry for him says, oh, go on then. And uh, we can use some kind of defeated animation for this. So talk exhausted. We'll have Jamie say, yes, it's gonna be so awesome. Let's have a fist bump here, uh, react, pump, fist, happy, and uh, maybe a cheer, cheer, happy loop. And then we'll have the dad do a chuckle. And then finally, we're going to have Jamie run to catch up with Chloe. So let's just drag him across to the right as well. Copy that spot coordinate and it's walks to. We'll have the duration be one second and we want him to run. So and Jamie is run athletic neutral loop. OK, let's have a look at this scene in full.
So there we go guys, that is how you create child characters and put them into your episode stories. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the helpful tutorials that I've got coming up. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure to comment them down below. And if you know the answer to anyone else's questions in the comments, it would be great if you could give them a quick answer to help them out. Thank you so much for watching guys, good luck adding child characters to your episode stories, and I will see you all in my next video.